So the Dark Fest official stable build is finally available for Redmi Note 9 Pro, Pro Max, Redmi Note 10 Lite and Poco M2 Pro. So today in this video, I will talk about the overall experience, smoothness, battery backup and gaming performance. So let's get started. So at first talking about the post. This is the post of the ROM which I installed on my Redmi Note 9 Pro. So this is the first official 9th April build and you can see the change log here and the instructions for flashing this ROM. I will also talk about the installation in the end of the video. So wait for that. So first of all, let's see the about info of this ROM. So if I go to the about, you can see this is 14 official stable Miatol 9th April build and the maintainer of this ROM is Arpon aka Firefly09 and the security update is of 5 April 2024 and the kernel that is used in this build is the 4.14.341 Kinesis kernel and this is the latest version I mean upstreamed and this comes with the kernel issue so the kernel issue is working fine and I am using the Gigisk module and talking about the safety net this build comes with the play product certified by default so no need to pass the safety net by flashing modules or something so that's a major point of this rom and the serial status is enforcing which is good for security purpose now in system we get the gestures and in gestures we get the quickly open camera one-handed mode lip to check phone so the lip to check phone is working fine you can see then we have the press and hold power button if i go to this option you can see there is no advanced reboot option so even without advanced reboot we can go to reboot into recovery or fast boot by key mapping it's the advantage of some devices now we have the brightness control swipe to screenshot and prevent ringing and we have the double tap to check phone then we have the default usb configuration so here you can choose between usb tethering no data transfer midi or ptp and we have the keyboard and the dark face updater so in dark face updater you can see there is no updates that means this is the latest build which i am currently on now in navigation mode we get the gesture navigation and if i go to settings you can see i have the height gesture bar option and the haptic feedback the back height the left edge and right edge and there is no option to hide the gesture pill so that's missing in this build and we also get the two button and three button navigation now moving straight to the security and privacy we have the fingerprint and face unlock with the screen lock and if i go to the settings you can see we have some options like auto confirm lock and scramble layout etc so the scramble layout basically changes the key combination in the numpad so every time you have to find the exact pin and that will be helpful for security purpose now in wallpaper and style we get the typical android 14 wallpaper style and we get these lock screens and in clock color and size we get these options this is just like other roms and we have the more lock screen options and in more lock screen options we get the add text to lock screen shortcuts and dynamic lock and we also have the lip to check phone here also then in change wallpaper we get these options so i don't know why the google wallpaper options are not showing only the dark faced wallpaper is available and we get these options however you can set the wallpaper by your own then we have the more lock screen options and in home screen we get these options now in icon we get plenty of options same goes for font and shape now talking about the battery backup of this build the battery backup is pretty good i got around seven to eight hours of screen on time and this will depend on your usage in light usage you may get up to nine hours of screen on time so there is no problem with the battery backup it's pretty good and talking about the options in the battery section we have the battery usage here you can check out the battery usage graph and you can see currently the screen on time is three hours although this is on a light usage now we have the battery optimization and charging control so in charging control we get three modes like lineage os the automatic schedule custom schedule and limit charging so in limit charging you can set a percentage and we have the block sensors option for specific apps then we have the battery information and battery widget then in derp space we get all the customization for derp faced room here we have the battery settings and in battery settings we have battery style so percentage files charging etc and we have the clock settings and the status bar items then the traffic indicators and in miscellaneous we get the logo status bar lyric and the 4g icon now in the second option we get the island notification the island notification basically looks like this the notification comes in the island style 
but not in the camera notch. In quick settings, we get the QS styles layout, brightness slider, battery estimates, animation style, etc. Now in the third option, we get the lock screen UI. Here we get unlock animation, skin of animation. So I basically set this to CRT and it looks like this. Then we have the weather settings, charging animation, lock screen charging info, etc. Now in the last option, we get the pulse and in customization, we get monet engine, body font, brightness slider style, navbar style, icon pack, Wi-Fi icon style, signal icons, data icon style and icon shape. Then in general settings, we have the unlimited Google photo storage and Netflix group. So we don't have the unlock higher FPS in games option. So for games, you have to manually unlock higher FPS by using modules or by using graphics tools. So this is it about the customization center. Now talking about the network and internet, we get the private DNS and in private DNS, we only get Cloudflare DNS. So this is all about this ROM. Now for benchmarking, I have tested the CPU throttling test and Antutu. So let me show you the screenshot. So in this ROM, we don't get any thermal profiles. So all you can see is the default performance of this ROM. So in default performance, we get 89% maximum throttling without using any performance mods. And talking about the Antutu score, in Antutu, I got 3,98,330, which is pretty good score. And talking about the temperature, you can see the temperature graph right here. So this is actually a good score considering the battery backup is that good. And talking about the camera application, we don't get ANX camera in this ROM. We get this lineage camera, which is working fine though. There is no issue using this camera, but in video mode, we don't get FPS option. We only can change the resolution of the video. So that's a drawback, but however, you can use any Gcam that is supported on this device. So this is it for the review. Now for installation, the installation is not that difficult. So for installation, you have to use an FB version 2 based recovery. So in latest Orange Fox recovery, the FB version 2 encryption is supported. That's why you can simply use the latest Orange Fox recovery, which I used to and then just, just wipe Telvic cache data and flash this ROM and format data and then reboot to system so this is the basic installation there is no difficulty and for sound improvement there is no dolby application and even if i go to sound and vibration you can see there is only special audio and no extra options for audio optimization however in in the volume section we get the increasing ring volume so the ringtone volume increases gradually so now let's get to the gaming test and for gaming, we don't have smooth extreme in this ROM because we don't have unlock higher FPS in games. So we have to use GFX tool. So let's get to the gaming review. So guys, I am here with the BGMI and I have used a module to unlock 90 FPS. And you can see I can even unlock 90 FPS, but the display is 60 Hz. So I will keep it on 60. So let's see an arena team death match. Then I will proceed to a classic. And you can see the frame rate and GP frequency right here. So keep an eye on the frame rate while I am doing the gameplay. So guys, currently the surrounding temperature is around 35 degree. That's why the device temperature is also more than 37. And you can see we are already getting around 59 FPS without even using any performance mods. So the frame rate is pretty good in this ROM. So it's a proper daily driver ROM, you can say, because the battery backup is good, the gaming, the gaming experience is good, and there is also some customizations. So overall, this ROM is a good package. So the frame rate sometimes drop to 50 FPS, but because of the surrounding temperature, the frame rate is going down sometimes 
so this is the frame rate that we get in the team death match So guys you can see in battle royale the frame rate is around 40 fps and it quickly jumped to 60. So the overall gaming experience is good but sometimes you get frame drops but in that but in that case if you use any performance modules or any custom kernel that has a good performance then you will get better gaming experience and better frame rates so you can see currently we are getting around 57 to 60 fps and sometimes there it's frame drops around 50 and there is not much enemies so for better gaming review we have to do a live streaming or do a complete match otherwise we cannot judge the performance in battle royale but however we got a basic idea that this can give 55 to 60 fps in the battle royale and for team judge match you already saw the fps that we get that's actually good so this is it for the gaming review now let's quit the match because there is no enemies and i'm noob and guys because of high surrounding temperature the battery temperature reached 44 degree here you can see in 44 degree it was giving good frame rate that's why the rom is really good so this is it for this video if you found this video helpful make sure to subscribe to this channel and if you like this video give it a thumbs up so i will see you in the next video bye bye